Hey everybody, this is JJ of RealitySurvival.com and uh, today I don't know if you can see the mountains up there but that's where we're headed. That's uh, Pikes Peak in the uh, front range right out here uh, west of Colorado Springs. I'm just going to put the uh, U.S. Air Force survival knife to the test. Um, been abusing it for a little while and beating on it and uh, just want to go up here and, and continue that a little bit. Hopefully you can still see this. got some good dry wood in it even though it's, the outside is uh, rotten the inside still still pretty good we can probably split that up get a fire good. going with that Here, use that from the platform, I guess. Since I'm going to put this other stuff in the fire. You know, and the, this knife's got a pretty good tip to it. Man, it's pretty strong. You really don't have to worry about it breaking off or anything like that. Another good thing about this knife is it's got this pommel end on it. And, uh, you know, it's really good for beating on stuff and driving stakes and, you know, whatever you need. If you need to use your knife like a hammer, this definitely will allow you to do that with no problems. You know, a lot of guys on knife tests and stuff like that show, you know, chopping and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I personally think that this knife is not really heavy enough to do that effectively. I mean, you can, you can chop with it and it will, you know, make some little indentations or whatever, but it's really not going to be super effective. <laughs> As far as chopping goes, you know, it's just not the best chopper. It really doesn't have enough weight on the front of it, um, but you can certainly use it to 
uh, chop through stuff by batoning through it. So it's still useful in that respect. This thick blade isn't the best at uh, doing feather sticks, shavings. A thinner blade is usually a little better, but it'll do them. Um, you know, it'd probably work a little better if I touch the edge up somewhat. Not sure if you guys can see this or not, but one of the other improvements that I've done to the U.S. Air Force survival knife sheath is I've just put a piece of leather around it on the edge, put three grommets or uh, excuse me rivets in there, and I use that to hold a ferrule rod just right on the side, and then I just put a uh, piece of shock cord on the end of it to loop back around the end and hold it in there so that holds it in good so anyway we'll go ahead and light this up I've also made a couple of other improvements um, right here in at the very base you know um, of the of the edge right by the finger guard there's a take a file it's already pretty much squared off but it's got that factory coating over it and uh, if you take a file and just kind of clean that up It'll sharpen those edges off a little bit, makes it a little better for using a ferrule rod. And then the same thing on the top part at the base of the saw. You can also use the, the saw to strike the ferrule rod with, that actually works really well. And then where I flatten this tip off, that'll work as well. So you could use the blade too, but you got several other places that you can do it on this knife and, and it works just fine. Looks like we got the fire going. split wood fire we built with the survival knife. I don't know how long it took, probably probably at least 35 minutes or so. Thinking around, splitting up that, getting some other wood, all that. But uh, it, that's one thing a knife will do is it'll definitely baton down through wood and break things up. Um, it's got its weaknesses, but its strength in its spine and uh, you know its, its ability to take an abuse definitely one of its strengths okay so as you've been watching I've been out here kind of testing this uh, US Air Force survival knife um, kind of run it through the ringers and whatnot and I've, I've made a couple of improvements to you I've talked to you about some of those already one of the other things I did was if you notice the finger guard um, when it came out of the factory if you look at the pictures above or below you'll see that it had a you know a finger guard on this side that was equal on this side and had two holes in it and I went ahead and and saw that off um, and I left you know probably an eighth of an inch or so sticking out and the reason for that is that when you're getting up on the knife you know trying to do uh, some you know work that needs a little bit more control if that finger guard is there it, it's in your way and as you can see when I lay my thumb down over it you'll see what I'm talking about. And, and so you can't choke up on the knife as, as much. And so one of the improvements that I did, um, or I think is an improvement anyway, some people might think I'm tearing it up, but is I cut that off and rounded it over, and that allows me to 
choke up on the knife to be able to use you know this section of the blade a little better and the uh, the good thing to that is it allows you to get your thumb right there on that saw back on that those uh, the saw cuts or whatever you call them the saw back I guess and, and it kind of acts like you know uh, jimping or whatever and, and gives you a pretty good grip on there so you can control the knife fairly well when you do that so that's one of the other improvements I've done and I think as is after the improvements um, you know it, it makes a, a pretty decent knife it can take a beating you can baton down through it you know you can um, pry with it you know you can, you can put some leverage on it and all that kind of stuff and it's not too bad um, it isn't it don't mistake me, you know, I mean, it's not a, like a CRK, uh, cold steel, um, you know, or something like that, where it's just a super beefy knife and you're never going to break it or whatever, but for the money, it's it's not bad, you know, um, it's got a lot more strength when you're beating on it, you know, straight down the spine, uh, it has less strength when you're, when you are, uh, prying with it laterally, uh, the tip is pretty good and strong. Uh, the edge, w it will hold an edge uh, fairly decent, better than some knives, not as good as others. Um, as you saw, the finger guard is kind of in the way on the top side, so I just removed that. The, the handle is really good, very comfortable, gives you a good purchase on the knife and, and allows you to really hold it well. The pommel is a very strong uh, thing on it and you know that will allow you to to hammer in stuff and beat on stuff um, the saw back fills up kind of quickly as you saw um, might do a little better on drier wood but you know so it's got it's got its ups and downs um, I think on a scale of 10 you know if I had to if I had to, to assign a rating to it I would probably put it like maybe a 6.5 or so um, uh, that's that's probably about where I'd put it uh, on the scale. I think it's decent uh, for the money that you get. It's it's a value, you know. It's not it's not a high quality, high dollar bushcraft knife um, that's gonna you know do everything and do it all well. But it does most bushcraft tasks pretty decently. Um, you know, I used it for four years up at the U.S. Air Force Survival School. I never broke one. I built hundreds of split wood fires. I did, uh, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20 demonstrations a day probably using the knife. And I would be out in the woods for six days at a time, and I would never sharpen it when I was out there. Uh, when I would get home, I would have to sharpen it for the, you know, before the next class. But it lasted me out in the wilderness, you know, for six days at a time, and I never really had any problem with it. So you know overall it's, it's pretty decent and I think it would work for most people in most situations um, it's got that you know black powder coating on there to keep it from rusting up too bad or anything um, if you wanted to buy a knife to have in like a vehicle everyday carry kit or a get home bag or a bug out bag and you didn't want to have to think about it and it wasn't you know it was something that was designed to be used for a few days and and uh, you know to get you through I think this is a good knife you know I think that's a good fit for it uh, if you are, um, you know, somebody who's just out all the time beating on it and beating on it, you know, then you might want something different, you know, and as a survival instructor in the Air Force, I had to use this one because it's what was issued, but there could be circumstances where, you know, uh, people who are in the woods a lot might want something a little better, but, you know, for the most, most people, for the average Joe, I think it'll work pretty well. So, that's my opinion. Uh, like I said, I give it about a 6.5 out of 10. Um, and it's not a bad knife, you know. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely got its strong points.
blood. So this has been the review of the U.S. Air Force Survival Knife. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you found it useful. Um, and I just wanted to take a second and thank Creek Stewart out at uh, Willowhaven Outdoor. And his website is willowhavenoutdoor.com. And he's got a really good site out there. I, don't, and I know you guys, a lot of you guys are probably watching this uh, from the link on his site. Um, this article was, you know, posted there on his uh, his website. Um, and, but I don't know if you guys know or not, but he also has some survival classes where uh, he teaches outdoor wilderness survival. Talks a lot about bug out bags, bug out bag preparation, you know, and a lot of different things, a lot of different bushcraft techniques that you can utilize to, uh, you know, just build your knowledge base. And I highly recommend you guys check that out. Um, I've known Creek for a little while now and uh, you know the conversations that I've had with him and and the the blogs that I've seen him post and everything like that tell me that that he's very competent and he knows what he's doing and uh, I don't think he's gonna steer you wrong so if you get the opportunity you know check out his courses and uh, check out the Willowhaven Outdoor store uh, he's got a lot of really good products he doesn't um, sell products on there unless you know they're high quality products and um, I think they're definitely worth your consideration. So, anyway, just wanted to say thanks again to Creek for sponsoring this and for posting it on his site. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll be working together again soon.